What are some natural home remedies to fix IBS? That's the topic that we'll dive into today's video. In this video, I'll show you three high impact strategies that you can start today at home naturally for IBS to start reversing inflammation fast. We'll even review the scientific research and go in depth to show how to resolve IBS symptoms. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of my patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks, without the need for complex or costly interventions. If you're serious about finding lasting solution for IBS and achieving results fast, check out the link in the description below where I walk you through the protocols that have helped my clients with IBS achieve health within six weeks. You can grab it at the link below the video and I'll know it'll help you so much. The link takes you to a page where you enter in your email and receive free training on how to reverse IBS. Everything you need to know is in there, including free guides, tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who've reversed their conditions for good and are now healthy. It comes with a complete actionable game plan for how you can do this yourself at home. Just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. So be sure to check that out. The material you're about to watch in this video is taken straight out of my Mind Get Immunity Academy, where people just like you learn how to beat their irritable bowel symptoms for good, even when the diagnosis is unclear. Now I'm going to show you how to incorporate three easy natural home remedies to relieve IBS inflammation fast. I'm going to show you the science behind these methods and what actually works and what to avoid. In addition, I'm going to give you some useful tips on how to start and how to plan your approach for addressing IBS inflammation. Now before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. These are must-see videos for anyone with IBS looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's really helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now onto the topic of natural home remedies for IBS. The mistake I see most people make is they get sucked into just taking medications or relying on their doctors for help. While having a good physician is great, the truth is there are several significant ways to decrease inflammation on your own within your control which greatly impact irritable bowel symptoms. And you may be thinking, what are these remedies? Well, let's talk about natural home remedies by discussing three factors you'll need to optimize to solve irritable bowel inflammation. In training, we used to work 80 to 100 hours a week for many years. So I've certainly experienced sleep deprivation for long periods of time, and I can say that the lack of sleep really takes a toll. Many of my friends and family also work hard jobs and take care of kids and family, so prioritizing good sleep can be tough, but actually getting good sleep is not that hard. There are several hard truths that you need to come to terms with when it comes to sleep. In my own life, I've experienced almost every symptom of inflammation, so the topic of sleep is near and dear to me, and I hope I can shed some light on this issue. It turns out sleep problems are so common that only a quarter of adults actually report getting good sleep on a continuous basis. The other 75% are experiencing problems, sometimes on a daily basis. We know that sleep disturbance leads to inflammation due to increases in cortisol, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin-6. But did you know, disturbances in sleep are one of the strongest epigenetic triggers of inflammation. Circadian rhythms exert control on 15% of our genes. That's the natural ebb and flow our body tells us to follow. Unfortunately, things like work and family and stress often get in the way. Sleep affects the genes that control aging, mood, digestion, and immune inflammation, basically every biologic function that matters to us on a daily basis. So what does restorative sleep look like? I like to think of sleep in functional parts. Deep sleep is for tissue growth and healing. Rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, is important for learning and memory. Together, these two compromise what we call restorative sleep, which is typically around 40% of the total sleep cycle. Now obviously these ratios can change. For example, many people notice that after a night of drinking alcohol, they may not be as sharp or rested the following day. That's because the alcohol affects the amount of restorative sleep you get. Medications such as Ambien, Benadryl, Xanax, which are typically used as sleep aids, also negatively alter these ratios and cause cognitive decline over time. Caffeine is another big one, especially if it's consumed in the afternoon or evening time. Exercise decreases inflammation. 
Most people who deal with inflammation have very low energy levels. They also deal with pain in the muscles and joints. So I'm aware that starting exercise may be difficult, but I can also tell you that once you initiate some sort of program, even if it's not very much, you'll start to see changes. I think exercise serves a few purposes. One, it decreases inflammation. It favorably affects the TNF-alpha, IL-6, and arachidonic acid pathways. Second, it improves sleep. People who have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, if they exercise during the day, and I mean really exercise, to the point of feeling tired after they're done, they do better when it comes to bedtime. They're just so exhausted that they fall asleep and stay asleep. Three, it decreases anxiety and stress. Exercise is a potent inhibitor of the hormone cortisol. Four, it secretes growth hormone, which stimulates your body's cells to adopt a more youthful metabolism. Five, it improves digestion. Things move faster through the colon. So what type of exercise is the best? I recommend high intensity interval training two to three times per week and start off with about 20 minutes. You should also do some resistance and weight training two to four times a week. Start off with 20 minutes. Focus on large muscle groups. So things like squats, lat pull downs, shoulder presses, leg curls. What you should also start off with is maybe 10 minutes of low impact cardio each day. Something like the Stairmaster, biking, running, swimming. It depends on if you have sore joints and muscles, you may have to adjust this accordingly. A full workout routine is beyond the scope of this training, but just start something and start developing a full regimen as you go. If you break a sweat at least three to four times a week and work large muscle groups at least twice a week, you can be pretty sure that your inflammation will decrease substantially and you'll feel better. I realize that stress can play a big role in inflammation. For one, it can trigger the fight or flight response, which sends your body's cortisol levels skyrocketing. It can also affect sleep, diet, and overall gene function. I find that many people work hard jobs, have financial insecurity, take care of loved ones at home, so there are a lot of obligations that are being placed higher than your own. On the most basic level, stress occurs when expectations don't meet reality. So you can either change expectations, that would be things like meal planning or calendars, time management, outsourcing, setting boundaries, or change your reality, which would mean letting go of certain obligations and commitments and becoming more efficient, basically leveling up. This process can be difficult because it will challenge your assumptions and long-held beliefs. I'm actually saying let go of some of your obligations, especially if they're impacting your health. Going from unwell and sick to healthy is a transformative process, and sometimes it requires some real changes to alleviate stress in your life. I've seen people have to take an easier work schedule so that they can have more time at home. I've seen people tell loved ones that they can't take care of them like they used to. And this can be especially hard for parents with young children. Many times, kids are the reason they can't sleep at night or can't eat healthy food in the house. My response to this is don't totally abandon all your obligations and responsibilities, but set boundaries and set expectations for what is reasonable. And don't beat yourself up if you don't meet some high standard. You can't always do everything, even for your own kids or loved ones. Ask for help. Kids are one thing, but it gets even harder sometimes dealing with older adults, frankly. Sometimes there's a spouse or a partner or a family member that's just not pulling their weight and is in fact creating more work for you. It's okay to say no. It's okay to ask for help. It's also okay to take a step back from certain relationships and set healthy boundaries. The reality is our bodies tell us when we're wrong when we're doing things that we're not supposed to be doing. Whether it's the food we eat or the company we keep or the types of work that we do or the types of relationship that we have or the amount of sleep that we get, all of these things affect our health. And if there's something in your life that's preventing you from achieving that goal, then you need to take a hard look at it and see what can be done. And I'm happy to tell you a little bit about my own life. I've had to give up a lot of friendships over the years because of the burden of maintaining some of these relationships were causing harm to my own health. Even family members I've had to establish boundaries with to make sure I know what I'm comfortable dealing with. Just because they're family doesn't mean they have the permission to invade your life. With work, I used to work crazy hours for the hospital until I realized that the lack of sleep and the lack of exercise and the inability to plan meals was really taking a toll. What good is it if you perform at your job or company, but your body takes a beat down for it? 
your company or business benefits, but you won't be able to maintain that for very long. Also, it comes down to a self-respect issue. If you care about yourself, you will not subject yourself to certain things, even if it means sacrificing short-term to get a long-term benefit. Obviously, things like counseling, therapy, church, social activities, and groups help, but I found that unless you're willing to do the inner work to understand what your body really needs and why, unless you're really willing to grow as an individual, you will not see lasting change. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, I wanna know, what works for you? What have you tried at home that actually improves IBS symptoms? Let me know in the comments below if you like this video. Help support my channel by sharing this with your fellow loved ones and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips on IBS. This is Dr. Chandu Dasri with the Mind Good Immunity Clinic and I'll see you next time.